A group of Carberry Coast residents who have lost their life savings and in some cases their homes say they want the mortgage broker responsible to be prosecuted. Close Up believes former Kiwi mortgage market broker Kerry Buddle of Parapararumu could owe as much as a million dollars to former clients, staff and acquaintances. She convinced people to borrow against their houses to give her a loan which she never paid back. Her victims want to warn others not to trust Kerry Buddle. Kareen Ambler has the story. She befriends, wins your trust or earns your trust, and then uses that to get to what she really wants, which is the money. I despise her at the moment. I really do. Jenny and Byron Twist are talking about this woman, former Kapiti Coast mortgage broker Kerry Buddle. She owes them $35,000 after convincing them to borrow money to help an English couple who they now know never existed. Chip on the wall over your eyes that bad, um, you have to say yes in the end. She makes it sound so good, so professional. The Twists met Kerry Buddle in mid-2009. She became a friend and mentor and they respected her. So in March last year when she came to them with a business proposal, they didn't think twice. They couldn't get a loan because their money apparently was tied up in the UK at that stage. So in order for them to get a house here, she approached us with that, asking if we could lend them the money for six months. We were to get $1,500 on drawdown and then $100 a month thereafter until, until the loan, the was, loan paid. was paid. $100 extra? Extra a month until the loan was paid. Kerry Buddle organised the loan through Hamilton Company Base Court Finance. The English couple were to make all the repayments, but a few months down the track, a bombshell. I received a letter from Base Court saying that they were going to um, force close on my mortgage. To take your house? To yes. take the house. It turns out the repayments were never made, and Base Court knew nothing about an English couple. Kerry Buddle had lied about what the loan was for. They thought that I'd borrowed the money to buy machinery for my business pet housing. Why did they think that? Because that's what Kerry had put on the original um, loan application. Did you know that? No. Local cattery owner Cassie Ford is even worse off. I'm scrimping and saving and often end up at the grocery store just for a bottle of milk to have wheat mix or something for dinner. She met Kerry Buddle in late 2009 when she was thinking of getting a loan. She decided against it, but in May last year there was a knock on her door. Uh, well, she came to me and uh, begged me um, to keep it quiet and just wanted a loan. She was desperate for tax money. Cassie account. lent Kerry Buddle $28,000, which Kerry arranged for her to borrow through Base Corp. A week later, she came back for more and Cassie borrowed another 11000 But it didn't end there. She came back to me three times in total, and I was just too soft. <laughs> so the last time it actually came out of your own savings? Yes, I actually wasn't going to lend her that, but she was really desperate. The last loan was for $12,500. Kerry Buddle now owes Cassie 53000 and efforts to get the money back through lawyers and the police have so far failed. Just thinking about her makes me angry, what she's done. Why did you lend her the money? Because I'm too much of a soft touch. But like I said, because she was so well known in Kapiti, um, I thought I could trust her. I'll give you 500. Oh, wow. Kerry Buddle has a high profile on the Kapiti coast. She looks the part. Flashy car, larger-than-life personality, and most importantly, she can talk the talk. She's really good at talking. Kerry Buddle's former staff member, Shannon Robinson, says staff knew nothing about the loans from clients. But towards the end of last year, suspected something was wrong when angry customers would turn up at the office and refuse to leave. And I had asked her, have you borrowed money from any of our clients? Have you physically borrowed money? And she said, she looked me in the eye and she said, no, I haven't. I have not borrowed money. Shannon says her pay bounced at least 10 times in the three years she worked for Kerry Buddle. Why did you keep working for her? She was a friend. I trusted her. I trusted her word. Her word was, um, I always, oh sorry, I always look after you. 
Yeah, I, I trusted her fully, and she asked for 110%. We gave her 100% more. We um, pushed ourselves to, to make her happy. And she says she's constantly approached by angry people in the street. Yeah, it's a really regular thing. And it's gut-wrenching every time you hear it, because sometimes it's a new person that you don't know about, and, and you think... What is she doing? What, 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 is she, what was she thinking? Close Up has spoken to a number of other people owed money by Kerry Buddle, some of whom say they've lost their homes. Despite numerous approaches by us, Kerry Buddle refuses to discuss the matter, saying she intends to pay everyone back. Kiwi Mortgage Market and Basecorp Finance have now cut all ties with Kerry Buddle, and police are investigating several complaints against her. Kerry Buddle has moved on to working for phone company ACM, signing people up for $400 a pop. She's now thought to be living in the Hutt Valley. All we can say is to all the victims out there, come forward. You know, we'll all help each other. And for everybody else out there, don't sign nothing with Kerry Buddle. Kiwi Mortgage Market says it's extremely disappointed in Kerry Buttle and deeply sympathetic to her victims. It says it too is a victim, having suffered damage to its business and financial loss. And Base Corp Finance say they've never had a broker present fictitious applications before and they feel betrayed. They say Kerry Buttle's actions are manipulative and totally reprehensible. Joining us now is the chairman of the New Zealand Mortgage Brokers Association, Darren Prattley. Darren, we're, tr we're supposed to trust people like you, aren't we? Well, Mark, I, I look at that clip and I, I really say, I'm so sorry for those people. I feel that mortgage... It's not about mortgage broking in this situation. I feel it's someone who's preyed on the naive and maybe financially... Um, people that, that don't understand the financial situation very well and she's preyed on them and I think it's... She's a con artist. Absolutely. And I think... Tying it to the mortgage broking thing is, is a very difficult thing. The problem is, that, I mean, she came in under that guise, and people do trust more. I mean, it's more and more popular. People are going to people like you. Absolutely. We're seeing these days that mortgage brokers are becoming the very first financial advisor that most people will come into contact with, and, and that's what's becoming really important, that they get good advice. So why, I mean, are there any rules around mortgage brokers, any protection for, for, for clients? In 1997, the New Zealand Mortgage Brokers Association was set up by a group of mortgage brokers. The main aim was to set code and a standard that mortgage brokers would work by. And over that time, the association has got stronger about the rules that it provides and make sure members adhere to those. And that's why we now look at a situation like this where we just feel it, it so wrong. But she was a member. She was a member up until 2007, where she breached some rules of the NZMBA and we terminated her membership at that point. You thought she was dodgy? she breached some of our rules. OK, when that happens, do you let all the banks and people know this person's no longer one of us? We have a website that people can go to to check who is a member of the NZMBA. So by checking on that, you can see who are current members who are paid up and abide by that code of ethics. But a company like Base Corp, they've been dealing with her, they wouldn't know she's been busted by you guys. No, not at all. But, but again, they should be checking the website to make sure that she is. OK, look, I want to get to those in a minute, but, but in the meantime, there's been talk for some time of setting up the government setting up some rules, regulations and things around all financial advisors. What's happened to that? That's basically being implemented right now and, and I think this is going to help with the New Zealand consumer rely on the information they get from advisors. The government started by implementing a register which came into force from the 1st of April. That register is now up online and, and people can see that and make sure that their advisor is actually registered. And now from the 1st of July, all advisors have to go through a process of disclosure as well. There's some other people involved here as well. I, mean, I presume a lawyer must have been involved. The finance companies, look, I'm sorry, we saw them saying it's never happened before, you know, uh, but... Do they, should have they taken a bit more care in some, in some of these loans? Well, at the end of the day, they're the ones lending the money and it's their documentation that the client will sign generally in front of a lawyer um, because they are required to have some independent legal advice before they enter into a credit contract. So that's where uh, I just look at the situation and certainly feel that there's people that have certainly let these people down. Oh, look, your heart goes out to those people. Totally. And, and, and you look at what's gone on. She must have been pretty convincing. I think that's been the, 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 what I've seen here is that she is being convincing to these people and when you are not confident around the financial space, you can get caught. OK, the final thing, though, is if, if someone is representing themselves as a mortgage broker, they can go, what's your website? 
nznba.co.nz. OK, nznba.co.nz. Go on, go on to that and you can find out whether they are legit or not. But as we say, this thing was really just more of a straight con.